So you have a Canon DSLR and you installed Magic Lantern and you love all the stuff that comes along with it, the, all the added functionality. Wouldn't it be cool if you could grant the added functionality to something like this, a Canon PowerShot point and shoot? Well, you can. Okay, the first thing you should do is Google CHDK, which as you can see on the screen there is for Canon Hack Development Kit. Um, you'll end up here on this website, and this pretty much outlines the, um, the stuff that you can do now with this firmware on your camera, on your point and shoot. You have raw files, you can do bracketing, you know, HDR, full manual control over the exposure, which, you know, obviously was limited before. Um, zebra mode which is great live histogram all that good stuff um, so it's really it's really good stuff for your camera um, what you need to do is take your camera go over here type in the model my model happens to be the right there the uh, 490 I already have that pulled up so we come here and then it mentions on this screen that you should find out which firmware you have on there which is just as important with this as it is with Magic Lantern make sure you have the right firmware um, I use this tool acid so you can go ahead and download it there again I op already opened up a tab for it and essentially all you do is you take a picture with your camera open that program we you know once you download and install it obviously take that picture that you took open it with that program and it will tell you what the Form, firmware is. I'm going to try to pull it up right now for you. We're going to their actual uh, their actual website here and this screenshot right here you can see in that listing there where it shows the um, the firmware which in my case if we go over here and then over to downloads now I know mine was a D, so let me go ahead and try to pull that up right now. We'll go here with the stable one. And again, I'll go to A490 and right there, A490 100D. Now I've already downloaded that and unzipped it because it's a zip file. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and pop this and pop my card into the card reader, card reader into the uh, laptop obviously. Now let me see if I can go ahead and pull this up. There we go. All right. I'm going to go. Let's see. I'm going to pull up that folder here. Where are you now? Right there. All right, and I'm going to copy everything from here to here. And then I'll show you guys how you would load that up on your camera and the added functionality that you get by putting this firmware on there. Okay, once you copy the firmware to the card, which obviously you put back into the camera, and this varies from camera to camera. Um, you, you have to look it up on the website. But for this particular model, what I'm going to do is press and hold the, uh, the play button here. All right, right now it says no image because that's accurate. <laughs> so what I'm going to need to do is load the new firmware. And you might not be able to see it because uh, it's, it's kind of a yellow there. So. But I'm going to hit that button. Alright, let's see if we can get that in the shot there. Update firmware. Yes, we do. We want to. Click OK. And there you go. Now the firmware is loaded. Now in order to actually access the menus, you have to hit the play button again. Again, on this particular uh, camera. Down at the bottom there, you can see the uh, default script. I'm going to hit menu. And there you go, there's all your options. We have um, extra photo operations. I'll get to that in a moment. Video here, which is great, you can change the bit rate. Raw, you can shoot raw um, on the point and shoot now. 
edge overlay in case you know that's kind of self-explanatory a histogram zebra those are great for uh, you know, checking out blown air, blown out areas um, I like those a lot and let's see you got some miscellaneous stuff here too it actually comes with games a calendar um, but that's not necessarily what we're looking for I'm gonna hit back here now if we go into the extra photo operations you can bracket your shots in case you want to do a nice HDR you can override the shutter speed which is great the only thing you have to uh, be careful with that is obviously you know high shutter speed um, less lights gonna get in there and these aren't uh, you can't control them as much as a DSLR so uh, you might have dark shots but there's also compensation on here exposure compensation so still this is a very very capable uh, well, this firmware makes these cameras uh, very capable. There's an override subject distance, which you can kind of set the focal length. It doesn't autofocus. Normally, when you half press this, just like with most other cameras, it will autofocus on something. But if you set the actual distance, you'll have to move your body basically. So you, you have that option. I don't personally use it because. Um, again you can set the millimeters but you, you sort of have to know how far you want to be but the options there if you do want it you can override the ISO but what I'm going to do actually before I do that I'm gonna show you what it looks like here alright and the screen looks a little bit different you have a battery gauge at the top which isn't included with the normal software and I didn't enable the histogram let me go ahead and do that again play menu alright now it's set to always As you can see there, now what I was about to say before is what I'll do is take um, a couple of raw images. Uh, I'll set it so that it will take raw and JPEG and then we can compare them side by side and see what this firmware can do for us as far as uh, raw images is concerned. Okay and here we are in my raw editor of choice um, which to be honest I, I highly recommend um, it's not exactly Lightroom uh, but it's great you know it, it's I enjoy using it does the job alright so we have the raw image and we have the JPEG right there and um, let's take a look at these All right, not too bad. Let's do a little bit of see if we can get that exposure compensation up a little bit. And I purposely took the picture like that because you have the dark areas off to the left there, and uh, obviously the uh, the bright areas there. So let's see what this can do. Let's bring that up to like a solid one here. come down to the shadows and highlights it's a little too much there Let me bring it down a little bit but you get the idea now that's for the um, JPEG now let's go over to the raw image do here let's see the colors a little off so there we go that's a little bit better now it might be a little noisy but what I'll do let's see I 
it's actually not too bad. I mean, it is what it is. It's it's basically a raw image, so you're, you're definitely going to have more um, recoverable information. The only other thing that I didn't mention about that firmware is you have to. There's a setting within there that makes it a bootable um, card. Otherwise, you're going to have to do that every time, which is fine because if you want to use it as a normal point and shoot, it will automatically do that. Um, just remember to hold, in my case, if you have the same model camera, hold that play button, go down to menu, go to the option to load the firmware. It's a quick process. Again, in this case, you hold the play, you go to the menu, and there's all your settings. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty straightforward, and I didn't show you everything. Again, there's bracketing. I'm not going to take up too much of your time. Um, there's also custom-made programs that people have uh, created. Uh, there's an intervalometer. I mean, if you want to do um, time lapses, things along those lines, you can do that with this. I've tested that out a little bit. Um, I didn't show you guys, but uh, that's great. So again, if you have a Canon point and shoot, you can do tons with that too. I mean, if you're charging the battery on your DSLR or you just want to play around. If, if you don't want to carry a DSLR, because truth be told, they are, you know, they get some size to them. Uh, this firmware will open up so many possibilities. So again, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching and see you soon.